Hello, and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Halpin, and today we are going to continue learning how to use measures of center to describe different real world situations. There are two learning goals for today's lesson. We'll have a math goal and a portrait of a graduate goal. Let's take a look at our math goal. I am learning to determine the effects of measures of center when a single value of a data set is added, removed, or changed. By the end of this lesson, I hope you can make predictions about how adding a data point will impact the measure of center. Our portrait of a graduate goal is focused on being a goal-directed and resilient individual. I can persevere through difficult tasks and situations. Throughout the lesson, I will ask you to make predictions and calculations. Sometimes you may make a mistake or feel uncertain, and that's okay. Mathematicians embrace challenges because they know the hard work and effort is worth it. For this lesson, you will need paper and a pencil or something else to write with. A calculator would also be helpful. We'll pause for a moment while you gather those materials. Now that you're ready, let's get started. Have you ever thought about the past and how technology has evolved over time? Let's watch this video to learn more about how music storage has changed over the years. The way we listen to and store music has changed quite a bit in the last hundred years. Starting in the 1890s, music could be listened to on this a wax cylinder. It held a whopping two minutes worth of music. Thankfully, the wax cylinder was replaced by the vinyl record and storage increased to about 45 minutes. Eventually, vinyl wasn't enough and tape recording was born. Reel to reel, eight track, and cassette. Cassette tapes became very popular in the 1980s and offered a huge storage improvement over records, topping out around 120 minutes. Then music made the leap to digital, first with the CD, and finally to electronic files that can be played on MP3 players, phones, and computers. Stored electronically, a music collection that once took up this much space can now fit inside a pocket. How many songs do you have on your MP3 player, computer, or phone? What about your classmates? How could you describe this data? What can you determine from this information? So now that you've watched the video, what did you already know? What might have been surprising to you? How might the ability to store music electronically impact our personal music collections? I'll let you think about that for a moment. People used to physically store their records, cassette tapes, and CDs. It took up physical space. Now people can access music online. And my hunch is that it has enabled people to build much larger music collections. Now we are going to dive into a real world scenario that is connected to music storage. Kira is a sixth grader at Poe Middle School. 
Kira is in the theater club and she loves music. Kira surveyed her friends with the following question. How many songs do you have stored electronically? This could be on an iPhone, a laptop, an iPad, or an MP3 player. Kira collected and recorded data for seven people, including herself. What do you notice about this data? You might have noticed that Mariella has the least amount of songs and Kira has the largest online music collection. If Kira wants to describe this data using a measure of center, which one should she choose and why? It looks like Kira has way more songs than the rest of her friends, and Mariella has way less songs. When a data set has numbers that are much larger or smaller than the rest of the data, we can describe them as outliers. Kira would like to find the median because she thinks it will be the best descriptor of the average. Kira decided to order the numbers from least to greatest. She began at the ends, crossing off 53 and 284, and then 102 and 138. Lastly, she crossed off 107 and 125. Now she has found the number in the middle. 114 is in the middle because it has three data points on each side. Kira thought about her strategy and decided it made sense since there's an odd number of data points. 114 describes the median number of songs that each person has. Kira forgot to survey Santiago. He was absent yesterday. Kira asked, hey Santiago, how many songs do you have stored electronically? Santiago said, Hey Kira, I have 176 songs on my Spotify account. Kira needs to add this value to her set of data. So now Kira has added Santiago and the number of songs he has on her chart. How do you think Santiago's data will impact the median? Make a prediction and record your thinking. Kira's data set was already ordered from least to greatest, so it was easy for her to plug in Santiago's number after 138. She knew to find the median, she just needed to repeat the same process, starting with the outside data points and working her way inward to the center. She crossed off 53, 284, and then 102, and then Santiago's data point, 176. She wasn't in the middle yet, so she needed to cross out 107 and 138. This time she realized that she had an even number of data points, so there are two numbers that are in the middle. Kira decided that the best way to move forward would be to decide what number is exactly between those two numbers. She could find the balance point or mean of 114 and 125, and that would give her the median for the entire data set. Kira found the sum of both numbers and divided by two to find the median. I'll give you a moment now to do that on your calculator.
Kira found that the sum was 239. 239 divided by 2 was 119 and 5 tenths. The median is 119 and 5 tenths songs. So let's talk about how the median was impacted. The original median was 114 songs, and after we added Santiago's data, it increased to 119 and 5 tenths songs. Why do you think that is? Well, we added a data point that was greater than the median. Numbers get larger as we move to the right, so the data shifted to the right when we added a data point. It increased the median or it made it larger. Let's look at another real world data set. In January 2020, the U.S. Figure Skating Championship was held in Greensboro, North Carolina. The table shows the final score of the top female skaters. What do you notice about this data? You might have noticed that Alyssa Liu had the highest score with 235 and 52 hundredths. She actually won the gold medal or top prize for this competition. Perhaps you noticed the range of the data. The scores span from about 181 to 235. Maybe you noticed that there doesn't seem to be any significant outliers and the data seems to be fairly distributed. Finding the mean will help us to get a clear picture of the data. It will show us the arithmetic average. For this example, we are going to find the mean. Well, why couldn't we use the mode as a measure of center? Hmm. Well, in this data set, there is not a data point that occurs more than once. This data doesn't have a mode. To find the mean score, we can find the sum of all the data points and then divide by the total number of data points. I will give you a moment to do this on your own. Since these real world data points are not friendly, it might be helpful to use a calculator. When you find the sum of all the data points, you should get 1,243 and 59 hundredths. When you divide the sum by six for the six skaters, you should get 207 and 265 thousandths. Since all of the scores are rounded to the nearest hundredth, we will round the mean to the nearest hundredth. The mean score is 207 and 27 hundredths. Gracie Gold came in seventh place. Her final score is 161 and 75 hundredths. How do you think her score will impact the mean of this data set? And why do you think that? And why do you think that?
Let's see the impact of Gracie Gold's score. First, we will find the sum of all the data points. I'll give you a moment to, calcul to calculate and jot down just the sum. Again, I encourage you to use your calculator. The sum is 1,405 and 34 hundredths. This time we will divide by seven because we have added one more data point. I'll give you a moment to divide the sum by seven. Rounded to the nearest hundredth, the mean score is 276 hundredths. So how did the mean change? Well, it looks like the mean decreased. Why do you think that is? Well, when we add another data point, it means that we need to divide by an additional data point as well. We included Gracie's score in the sum, and then we had to divide by seven instead of six. Gracie's score was lower than the original mean of 207 and 27 hundredths, so it makes sense that it would decrease the overall mean. Athletes are always competing to be the best. If I'm a figure skater, knowing the mean or arithmetic average score will help me understand where I stand in relation to my competitors. It also helps me to set goals for the future. If my score was 190 and 5 tenths and I fell below the mean, I might make a goal to earn 201 or above next time. Finding measures of center can be very pow powerful for understanding our world. In this case, the mean might help skaters to set a goal or plan a next step. How else might you use measures of center in the world around you? In today's episode of Math Matters, we learned how adding a data point can impact measures of center through the exploration of real world data. What is something you learned today through the exploration of real world data? What is something you learned today? What are you wondering? I encourage you to share what you've learned or what you might be wondering with a teacher or family member. Our portrait of a graduate goal was focused on, focused on persevering through difficult tasks. Did you keep trying today, even when things got tough? Did you believe in yourself? I believe in you, and I know you are capable of tackling challenging mathematics. I'm Mrs. Helpin. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.